Hey there, music fans. Beaker Repair Guy here. Thought I'd cover a couple of things that might be of interest to some of you. If you haven't encountered these in the past, you may in the future. This might give you a little heads up about uh, what you're looking at and possibly what to do about it. First, we'll go after the obvious, which is the pushed-in dust cap. This being the dust cap. And this is um, pretty common, as a matter of fact, with uh, especially with families with children or grandchildren visiting. These can be fixed sometimes and by the owner. This particular kind of dust cap is called a screen because, well, it is a screen. It's not solid. It passes air back and forth through there and it provides cooling for the voice coil. Oftentimes in cases like this I'll find a, uh, I guess it's a hat pin. Anyway, it's pretty stout and it's got a little handle there. And what we do is we just kind of insert and then I turn the pin to an angle so that I can pull up on the dust cap. It may take a few tries. You can use the pin, use the pin's tip, move around to push up any dimples like that. And that's all it took. It's completely back in place. Sometimes the dust cap is made of paper. It's solid. It takes something a little more substantial. And I have a couple of old dental tools. I guess they are. I don't know. Just something I inherited back from another shop. This one has a little right angle in it. And of course, you can pick at it and it's easier to pull with. This one being straight. And I can get in and do the same thing as I did with the hat pin there. If by any chance the dust cap gets really crushed and mangled and even pulling it up it still flexes it's kind of weak uh, come see me and uh, we'll talk about replacing the dust cap I can cut it out and put in a new one the second thing here is a lot of times people will call and say my speakers sound wonky uh, the low end sounds a little flabby I pulled off the grill cloth the speaker looks intact I don't know, it just sounds funny. One thing to look at, particularly in Hi-Fi, if it's got a foam rubber surround, such as this, they are prone to breaking down over years. How many years? Anybody's guess. I can't say that weather plays a part in it. I can't say it doesn't, but um, you know, the better care you take of the speakers and storage and whatnot, the better your odds are it's going to last but I, well foam rubber just has a shelf life you know if you just set a piece of foam rubber on a shelf it's going to deteriorate in time one thing you can do is gently pull against the foam I'm just very lightly doing this and it's showing me a space here where it's coming apart from the cone and you can see little obvious places like right here it just looks like it's breaking down see that so that's pretty much your uh, all you need to know there are places online that sell do-it-yourself kits for refoaming a speaker and while I don't want to discourage anybody from trying it um, you know I'm sure many people have done it and done it successfully but uh, you know if, if you have any questions uh, if you have shaky hands, if you've uh, not worked with your hands in this sort of fashion before, I'd say, you know, why risk it? Um, you could potentially do damage. Um, I had a customer just send me a picture the other day of a JBL 10-inch um, that he refoamed himself. He bought the kit and he made a mess of the first one. Fortunately for him, it works. It sounds fine. It just looks, well, horrible. And uh, he asked me if I could clean it up and redo it. And I said, not at this point. Because removing glue like that uh, could damage the, the cone itself. Being a paper cone, his was. Uh, it could just do more to weaken the paper. Uh, best leave it alone. But he's going to send me uh, the second speaker for me to refoam. And um, I have no doubt it will look much better than his first one. I just want to say if you feel like attempting it yourself is in the least bit out of the realm of your 
capabilities, come see me and I'll do a proper job for you.